I thought I'd do another paint uh, a miniature from start to finish video. Uh, this time I'm gonna paint the, the general from the Night Haunt army out of the Soul Wars box. It's this uh, dead guy on a dead horse. If we have a look at the How on Games Workshop painted this fella, it looks like this. This is what, you know, it's the one. And um, I've been going for a bit of another color scheme, but same, same theory going. It's got a sort of, my eye taunt is sort of blue smoky things, and then maybe a bit more um, just right out of the grape, dirty kind of a look. And so we'll try and give, uh, give this fellow uh, the same treatment. Now, as you can see, I've already primed this um, using a um, Zenithal priming. I've read the name now. It's basically, I've got a video on it. You can check that out or wherever else on the internet. Black and white um, spray, first a black and then a white. You get this shaded effect where, where the darker parts of the miniature is, is darker and wherever there would be light coming, um, it's lighter. The first thing I want to do is a really boring step, which is basically these areas that are inside the, um, the night of shrouds here, they're still gray and underneath inside the uh, bowel of the beast, of the horse, it's still sort of just gray plastic. And I want to cover that, all that, those areas up with, with the black, just so that it's just black. I've got my, um, I've got my wet palette ready. Uh, you should check out the whole wet palette thing. I've got a video on it. Uh, lots of other people do as well. Wet, wet palettes are great, so you should you should check it out. And um, I'm just gonna have a black. And I will be using this black later, so I might as well prepare it for, for later, which means I want to add some retarder in it. I'll explain that when we get there. Uh, but just add, if I can get it out. Just add a dollop of retarder. Now I haven't really been super precise, but just trying to get anywhere that's, well, for one, it's gonna be difficult to paint later on, but also just get black in there so that when looking at it, you don't see some gray shining out. I also, while I have the black, anything that I know I want to sort of paint metal, I'm gonna now paint black but really sort of watered down black. So, but I've realized I sort of like dry brushing on a metal, on a black, instead of just painting it all in a metal first. So I'm gonna do the helmet and the sword and uh, whatever bits and pieces. I really like, while painting, having this around, or if you just got the box, or if you have a look online for a picture, because sometimes it's nice inspiration, but also sort of makes you not miss details. Like I wasn't sure if, you know, is this part of the skeleton or, or is it supposed to be something else? And by looking at this, I can see, well, you know, it's, it's metal. So I'm gonna go for painting some skeleton. And I've been using, um, sorry, I'm just building up my little thing here so that you can actually see my wet palette. I use um, wet blending all the time, uh, just because I think it's a fun way of painting. And for skeletons, I've been using this stone gray. I'm mainly using Vallejo colors, or otherwise also known as model color. I also use some green for the darker bits. And some white. I try and find my retarder medium, which I just dollop into all of these. And what I like about wet blending is, especially at this stage when I don't really have to pay t too much attention about detail, is just that it actually feels like I'm painting something. And I don't have to be super precise. It's not just f like a coloring book, like if you just paint the one paint and cover the one bit with the one paint and another bit with another paint, it's sort of like a coloring book. This is, for me, a little bit more like you're painting something. Actually, I'm not gonna say I'm artistic, but you get my drift. I think mainly what I try 
and work with is actually trying to make things that would be in shade, try and make them a bit more shaded. All the skeleton bits are now painted, uh, wet blended. I want to give it a bit of a uh, dry brush. So I'm gonna mix um, a bit of the, the stone gray with some white, put the color in the brush and then just try and wipe as much of it as possible out on a piece of paper. And then go all over all the uh, bits and pieces that are sticking out just really lightly, um, just to get the ridges. Usually I try and go from like going, going up, stroking down, because that would be the way the light would be hitting the miniature. If there was a teeny weeny sun in the teeny weeny miniature world, then it would probably be up here somewhere. All right, there we are, dry brush is ready, is done. Now I'm gonna put a wash on this. So I'm gonna use Contrast Medium, which is part of the uh, Citadel Contrast range. Some black wash from Vallejo. I'll probably tip in a bit of green. Bill Tan Green. Agrax Earth Shade. I mean, it's mainly black, but it'll, it'll hopefully have a hint of brown and a teeny weeny bit of green. Mix that together, that should be Roughly 50-50. I should probably dry brush, dry brush this maybe once just to get some more highlights onto it, but I won't do that now, I'll wait. Um, the next step is all these swirly, smoky, uh, ghostly, scary bits on the other ones that I've been doing. There's not so much of it, if you have a look. But this is just so much more of it. And if we have a look at this one, the horse is a bit darker and the rider is a bit lighter. And I kind of like the sort of darkness on like the black on the horse. So I think I'm going to go with black, sort of blend in some blue highlights while I'm doing that. Uh, basically, I don't really buy that many new paints. I was using the turquoise on the other army, the Stormcast Eternals, so I'll use it on this as well. I put some light turquoise in there um, and I'll add some retarder medium as well. So coating it in black, try not to do anything stupid. And then whenever, whenever there's a ridge, I'll just get some of that like turquoise on there and blend it in. Now this is going to be washed later on, but I want a white underneath. Um, so that this, these end strands will be white. Ending up with something like that, which is, it's not a super smooth gradient, but with the wash on there, it'll just all melt together anyway. Okay, so that's Ethereal's clothing done. <laughs> uh, the shrouds of darkness around the horse. And but first I want to do some, some dry brush on here, just some white dry brush on the, um, on the white bits and then some turquoise dry brush just to pick out some of the details. I fill up my brush with uh, the white color and then on a piece of paper, just try and get as much of it off as possible. Lightly get some of these details. Now with that dry brushing done, um, I want to do just whatever rest of the details are on on, uh, on the horse, which is basically the horns, there's a, there's a small strap to, you know, giddy up. I'll start with the horns and I'll be using, I've got something called a flat earth, which is a brown and a tan earth a lighter brown and then probably some of the stone gray and some of the uh, some of the black it's already in my wet palette with these paints shaking is i've seen these machines that shake your paints for you it might be a good thing with these because it's really like all the pigment just sticks in the bottom so you see what i'm going for here and i might even 
just for the hell of it, and off with the white. Now when I started out painting this, I wasn't really sure of where I was going. I, this is sort of the first time where I, I'm not gonna say that, um, I appreciated the, the way this was painted, the Games Workshop version. I want to go sort of in the same way, which means I'm going to, I think now that I see how it's going to turn out a bit more, I'm going to keep these, these bright parts uh, or the spooky uh, stripes as light as possible, which means I'm going to try and keep this as dark as possible to get sort of a contrast between the two. And that's really sort of what's next, but I want to, before I do that, I want to finish off these metal parts because I probably will be dry brushing them. And dry brushing metal has a tendency of just flaking off small pieces of metal everywhere on your miniature. So I probably should have done it from the start. I don't know. I'll do it now at least so it doesn't get down on the cloak of uh, Madame Shroud. Gunmetal grey. And I, I don't want to contaminate my uh, wet palette with metallics. So I'll just dollop some in here. This is just for picking out the details, so it's not so much of where the light is coming from. And I want to sort of brush in a direction away from the horse as much as possible in case I get the um, these small particles. I'm now going to go just over the extra raised bits with this old bottle of chainmail. Just get these. That'll be about it. Okay, so I had a bit of an incident with a filled up hard drive. So I've been painting a while without filming it. I realized I hadn't done the hooves. I did the hooves pretty much in the same way as, as the, uh, the horn. So I was dry brushing the metal, all the metal bits, and then I added some washes on there. I, I mainly used the Nuln oil, black. It used to be called black wash when I was a kid, I think. Um, and while doing it, I um, thought, you know, maybe I should add some purple to his helmet, which I did. So it's got sort of a bit of a ghostly sheen going here. On the chainmail here, because I, I dry brushed that, and then just to add sort of a rust effect, um, I used a really watered down amaranth red and then put a wash on it. I put a wash on the horns and for that I used uh, the brown one, Agrax Earthshade. Now I would like to start on the shroud, on the shrouded knight. Is it the shroud? Knight of shrouds? Shrouded. I think I'm gonna go full black and full white. I've got some dots here of black from sometime earlier. Um, I need to paint that over with white and clean up the edges. So as always, using my uh, Vallejo uh, white. I do want to have quite a lot of, like dilute it quite a lot with water. You're asking yourselves, why paint it white when I'm then gonna paint it black? Well, you know what? I have no idea, it just sort of happened and then sort of dry brushed the end ridges a little bit to give it some depth. And now I'm gonna paint the top one black. And I was thinking, like I'm just experimenting here. I was thinking to mix some of my black with the technical contrast medium. I'm not expecting to get a contrast paint, but I want, I want to water it down so that it's just really thin so that you can still uh, get some depth in there. I don't want to use water because that just becomes pretty uneven in the end. So I'll try this and we'll see what happens. Contrast medium. I've got no idea how much to use. Um, I'm just still looking quite thick. We'll just add some water as well. All in black. Okay, 
it's black, but it does have some depth in there. It hasn't dried completely yet, uh, so it might still change a little bit, but it's sort of, it's black with, with some highlights, I guess you should, guess you should call it. Now I'm going to do the rest of the smoke here. And I'm going to do that with a wash. Beel Tan Green. Beel Tan Green. And I'm going to try use some of this uh, contrast medium here as well. Okay, so we'll mix some of it in with the wash itself. But always when I use my washes, I try and not take straight out of the pot. I don't want to sort of contaminate also, if you're using a wash on top of a metal, then uh, it's, you know, it most probably will end up being small metal flakes in your wash. So, just a tip from the non-pro. In the spur of the moment, I'll eat some, add some Coelia green shade, which is this darker one, going straight for the pot, just because I'm in a hurry, and add some up here. Now that's going to take some time to dry, um, so I figured we might as well do the whole horse and all. I'm going to be using mainly the uh, Cohelia green shade and a little bit of the Beel Tan. I haven't diluted this at all. It's just, just the way it is coming out of the pot. bits down here I'll mix in with some of this uh, greener or was it beel tan instead the wash is dry was it the desired effect uh, kind of it got kind of busy but it's gonna have to just uh, do I guess I think just to smooth this out a bit. I'll want to just dry brush the highlights. I'll mix some white with the with the green, the Beel Tan green. But my biggest issue is the purple. I'm sorry, but with all the green in here and whatever, the purple does not work for me. Probably dry brush metal on there again and maybe try a blue. It's going to be a lot of paint on paint, but I'd rather be a bit smudgy than purple. Sorry, Prince. Now, I my first plan with this sword was to try and kind of make it magical looking. I haven't really figured out how to do it. And so my first plan was to have a purple magical sword. Now, obviously, I won't go with purple because as you've noticed, I don't like it. Uh, I want to keep it metallic, but get some color in there as well. So I'll probably paint it with some chainmail wherever the light will hit and then wash it with the same blue as uh, he's got on his helmet and just leave it sort of semi, semi magical. I'm trying to get these streaks just to give it a bit of a magical feel. All right, so I just got a bit of the uh, Coelia green shade here. Ooh, it's looking magical. Isn't that fancy? While waiting for that uh, shade to dry properly, I thought I'd paint the scabbard here. But I've been thinking, should it be something fancy? And I think, no, I'm going to do it brown. I'm going to try and do some rush, rust. I've got this uh, Vallejo wash for rust effects. Oxido. I'm not going to say it requires patience, but it requires layering. Um, so I might have to do this a couple of times. And then you just, once that dries, you just have to sort of go back and do it again and go back and do it again and sort of enhance the effect wherever you think it's required. I think we're pretty much done. I might find some bits and pieces here and there on the way um, that I need to touch up. I don't think so. We're going to go for the base now. Like the bases, I've, I've done the base like I've done all my other bases 
from all the miniatures of this Sword War box. And on this one I've, I've put a sword I found from some old games workshop thingy. I'm going to start with that because I've got a bit of a... I want to make it bronze and I've got this favourite little bronze trick nowadays that I'd like to share. Balejo copper, refractive green. Just a dollop, small dollop of black. Uh, Nihilac oxide, Nihilac. Quite a fair amount of this. So I just had a look at a real statue made out of bronze or copper or whatever that was aged and basically they're this color, not really, but sort of. Now we're going to add some of this Nihilac Oxide. Here and there. I'm sort of doing it randomly but also trying to think of where where the oxide would have time to appear. Now while that's drying, I think I'm just going to paint the rest of the base. I mainly go for the, I think this is, was that the Tan Earth? Yeah. And sometimes I mix in some brown here and there and some black and some green and whatever. And um, just wet blend the whole thing. Um, so put some red in there, that was the uh, dark red, there's some green, there's some brown. Now I'm just going to paint all the stones in a grey, I'm using a dark sea grey. And now we're going to wash the base, this is going to be a lot of washes. Agrax Earthshade, Nalm Oil, Alejo Black Wash, Flesh Shade. I'm also going to have some of the Beel Tan and the Carlsberg Crimson ready to go and some Contrast Medium ready to go. And when I get closer to this that I want to be black, I'll just add more Nalm Oil and for the stone, Nalm Oil. For the red scabbard I painted over here, I used the Carsper Crimson. For the rest of the weapon here, I'll use the Nylon Oil. I have this bloodstained looking thing over here. I had some Carsper Crimson in that. Something green going. And some of the green. Just blending this, these different washes all over the place. Okay, so now it's time for some uh, dry brush. I've got the tan earth and I'm just gonna dry brush. After the sea grey on the uh, on the rocks, I'll mix some sea grey with some white just to get the edges on the rocks. This piece of skeleton here, I'm just gonna get some of my stone grey. So now we're just going to finish off this weapon down here. I've got my Nihilac Oxide. I'm going to put some in my wet palette and have water, pretty much 50-50. Dry brush that with some of the uh, copper, Vallejo copper. Old bronze scabbard, done. And I reckon the base is done. And I reckon we're done. I really enjoy these um, night haunts. To paint them more than the Stormcast, I reckon, because it's just a bit more free. There's not all that many sort of this piece of armor should be this, you know. If you're wondering about how long this took me, I reckon a day. You can hear that I'm sort of uh, whispering a bit. It's because everyone else is asleep. Yeah, and the neighbors are having a party. This is the London Grey, which is I use for uh, painting around uh, around the, the base. I'm just going to finish off this grey on the edges here of the base and then I've got myself a uh, general for my night night haunt army. Thanks for watching. 
I'm gonna probably take some pictures of this so that you can see it in more detail if you wish. But uh, anyway, hope you liked it.